Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Assessor's a video here today where it's a brand new video on the best portfolio trends and basically some really cool different things you can end up adding into your projects just to make your portfolio just look that much better, that much cooler, that much just more interactive. Um, that's the whole play here. So hopefully guys, and maybe if you guys are on Behance, get a little bit of a feature, maybe just if you're you know, doing your website and wanna make it look cool. They, all these things I think are pretty freaking dope and you guys will hopefully enjoy all of them. And uh, yeah, with that being said, of course, if you guys of course like the video at the end of the video or we can do it now, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> of course, leave it like on the video and if you guys are new to my channel please sure to subscribe because i go over really cool things pretty much every single week so love you guys enjoy the video all right guys so the first portfolio trend is a super clean and awesome way to show before and after for your project or your photo it's honestly a super dope feature that has a slide of the viewer can control to see whatever two photo differences you end up putting and to do it it's super simple first thing that you want to go ahead and do is upload your two identical dimension photos with one being the before edits and the other one being the after edits into a dropbox account which is also free to use after you guys upload your photos into Dropbox, then you guys can go to juxtapose.nightlab.com, which by the way, will have a link in the description down below for you guys to click on. Now in the left image, you want to choose the Dropbox icon and select your before photo. After it's uploaded to the Juxtapose site, then you can do the same exact thing for the right image, however you want to pick your after photo this time. Then after both photos are uploaded, under the options, you can uncheck every single box and then press publish. Right after you guys select the publish button, there will be an embedded code that shows up where you want to copy all of it with control A to select all of it and then control C to actually copy it. Then afterwards, you're ready to head over to your website or your Behance project. Keep in mind, most sites host embedded features like you'll see me end up using. However, for my example, I'll be using Behance, where for me, it's under add content labeled embedded on the right hand side. Once your embedded media window pops open, you can paste your code inside there. Now, depending on your document size, there's a possibility you will run into an issue that your scroll bar actually comes up because of resizing issues. So if that is happening for you or you want to prevent it, right after the frame border equals zero line, you want to write out scrolling equals in quotations, no. Then you want to make sure you change your height to whatever your document height you had set. So for me, that would be 800 since my document size was 1200 by 800. Once you guys fix your coding line, you can press embedded and you're done. Now your viewers can enjoy a super awesome interactive part of your portfolio to gain even more appreciation. Now for the next awesome portfolio trend that I've been seeing used quite literally, literally everywhere is a scrolling divider. These simple yet effective dividers can bring a lot of life to your projects with honestly very little to no experience with keyframes and after effects. So to go ahead and get started, you want to create a project size that is whatever your portfolio max width is. So in my case, in most cases, it would be 1920 followed by putting what height that you believe looks best, which is also your thickness of your divider. For me, that's going to be 300. With this small but honestly effective space, you can do whatever you think looks best, whether if it's flashing words, patterns, but for me, I'm going to do scrolling text. All right, homie, so I'm going to actually hop in with you guys and actually walk you guys through this. So hopefully it's a little bit easier for you guys to go ahead and follow. So over here on the right hand side, I'm going to right click and choose new and I'm going to choose solid. This solid color you're going to be choosing, of course, is your preference. I'm just going to go with black and press OK. Now, once my solid is now there, I can pretty much lock it so I never have to touch it again. And over here on the right hand side, again, I want to do new and I want to do text this time. And I'm going to type out whatever I want to have typed out. It can be a text. It could be a date. It can be your project name kind of going over and over and over again. But for now, I'm going to type this nice little simple one word. And then I'm also going to make it probably about a lot bigger than this. I'm going to click on this. Let's go for like maybe, hmm. Let's say right about here. So once I actually have my text and my size all thought out, I'm gonna make sure I select my text once again, go to where it says a line, and then over here, you wanna basically click it so that's a line in the middle. So just like so, align horizontally, and now we're good. And now we're also gonna do align, uh, excuse me, align, align vertically, and now it's perfectly in the center where I need it to be. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna click over here, I'm gonna control C, control V to make a duplicate, and with this duplicate text, I wanna basically align this toward the left. Then under the same exact thing, control C, control V, and then align this toward the right. So now I have three texts, which is pretty perfect. Of course, if it was smaller, you'd have more space. But for now, this is pretty good. One thing I also want to do is over here on the composition settings where I just right click over here, composition settings. I want to basically make this one second. So that would be zero, 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 one, zero, one to make it one second or zero, zero, regardless, right? As long as it's around one second, you're pretty good to go um, because we just want it to be short and it's going to be a very sweet kind of animation. And uh, this is perfect. So I'm going to press OK. Now with this, I want to go ahead and make one more duplicate. However, I want it to do it perfectly outside of the canvas. So for this, I'm going to move all of these after I select all three, right? Select the one on the top, hold shift, select the one on the bottom, right? Move this one in the middle and make sure I perfectly align this toward the right, right hand, excuse me, left hand side. So right around here, perfectly lined up. Now I'm going to do one more duplicate, right? Control C, Control V. 
and I want to then line this one toward the right hand side. Now I have basically four texts and also one outside the canvas all perfectly lined up. So now what I can do is I can select all these layers once again, move this back toward the middle and make sure it's of course lined up perfectly right here, just like it should be. Perfect. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is make sure I select all of them once again, and then use P on my keyboard for position, just like so. Then for this position, we're going to basically keyframe all of them at once. So if you just press the little icon right here, it'll add a keyframe for all of them, especially if they're all selected. Now with this, I can go all the way over to the right hand side and basically move my kind of time code to be at the one second mark. Then over here, I'm just going to basically hold these and take these just like so. While holding shift, I'm clicking and moving. I'm holding shift, clicking and moving it, and I'm going to line it up perfectly to be again once right here at the edge and it's perfect now. So now what should happen is it's just kind of like go through and then it's just kind of feel as if kind of going continuously and it's no longer kind of like either jagging or stuttering because we made sure we made all the spaces between the text perfectly even. So now that we have this, we are pretty much good to go. We can render this out. So the way I'm going to render this out is going into composition right here at to media encoder queue. Once your table ends up opening up, you can just click this little preset for the actual format and you want to make sure you're under animated GIF. Now for future reference, make sure you're not on GIF, make sure you're on animated GIF. And when you're on an animated GIF, you want to basically make sure you click on render maximum depth and also render maximum quality. Of course, choose your output, press OK, and then press this little play button right here. And then you guys will get rendering and now you're good to go. Now all you guys have to do is go to your Behance or your website of choice, and for me it's going to be Behance, so I'm going to go to add contents once again, add video or audio, and add in my new GIF. Simple, but yet honestly incredibly effective. For the last portfolio trend, I wanted to quickly introduce you guys some really simple layouts that are really awesome for continued flow or consistency throughout your portfolios. Now these first two ideas can help you set up your created elements very tightly with borders, pretty much making it feel very organized and thought out just by using these lines. It is super simple, but you might not realize how much these lines are used to help flow in a portfolio project. Also, keeping in mind when building your portfolio, using rules in Photoshop to line up your pieces will benefit you hugely when trying to keep things tight and clean. And just in case you guys were not aware, Control plus R on your keyboard is how you would actually bring them into view. Lastly, of course I have to mention the idea of using type texture as a possible route to take as well. Feel free to use these ideas as these are just really cool ways to also incorporate consistency throughout your slides and your projects. All of these things I ended up showing are incredibly easy things, but combined with the few things we mentioned before this segment, you can set yourself up for a dope project that honestly everyone will love. And with that being said, homies, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully you guys can take some of these cool elements, implement them in your next projects, get some more likes, appreciation, and overall just really cool ways to showcase your work in some of the best formats that I got possible. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Set some HQ out. You gotta keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking proud of you guys. Later. Much love. Peace.